Hello, my name is Simon Thibault. I'm uh, very pleased to be invited to present at the SPAE Optical System Design Conference this year. Uh, I will talk about freeform lenses uh, in consumer optics market. So this work has been done in collaboration with uh, Laval University and also uh, Immer Vision. I'm a uh, professor at Laval University, but also principal lens designer with Immer Vision. So uh, this work is, uh, is, will be outlined like, uh, like this. Uh, I will briefly introduce the motivation of uh, uh, looking at those questions about freeform and mobile phone. And, uh, and the motivation is mostly because during the last year, we saw uh, three phones coming on the market, which has this, um, uh, that they claim that they have freeform lenses. So this is a major improvement or major breakthrough in, uh, in plastic or injection plastic for mobile phone to use even potentially uh, freeform optics. So this is very an interesting subject to discuss. And I will show you what we did. Uh, to study this freeform lens on those uh, on those cell phones, I uh, will briefly introduce also what 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 is now a freeform. So what is the main definition, and uh, and also we will go a little bit behind the definition because we we'll realize that this new definition provided early this year by uh, by Janik Roland is not exactly what those probably those phones use, and uh, we will also have this Huawei uh, phone in the lab. So we will show. Uh, if uh, the freeform lens has an impact on the field of view and if we can see any difference. And then I will discuss about the anamorphic cinema phone, uh, which uh, lens um, uh, using uh, freeform surface, called now an asymmetrical surface, just to, to have this cinematic effect of uh, side 16 to 9 ratio uh, rather than the 4 to 3 as a standard uh, cinematic uh, lens. And then we will conclude. So the motivation of the work, of course, is, is the freeform optics. So freeform is quite popular for, uh, for many years now. Uh, we saw these terms coming uh, 10 years ago, mostly, and then it's more and more popular. Of course, it has been used in, in, uh, in many lighting uh, application for a while. And, uh, and also uh, with the development of new uh, technology for the fabrication using CNC equipment in optics, bring uh, freeform optics to, uh, to imaging optics. And, and of course, uh, this include uh, uh, in display and projector and microscopy uh, and, uh, and cameras and uh, telescope design, compact telescope design. And, and, uh, and of course, those development is something very nice. And it's also very, very interesting to see that you can have this progress now in, in eventually in consumer. So let's see in consumer what was um, what's happened? So here is the is just what I just saying about the different application in uh, in display in uh, projector uh, using freeform with uh, some reference here. But if you look in cell phones, um, we can ask ourselves. Uh, we have here a couple of of uh, patterns uh, that shows many many uh, recent lens or uh, in in a cell phone using uh, 4p design up to uh, 8 and uh, 8p design so the very most recent pattern with 8p design and you have this uh, whirly wavy shape optics there uh, to ensure that you have a compact and also uh, that you meet the requirement in terms of chief angle and uh, potentially relative illumination so what we can ask ourselves is uh, is does really cell phone optics already use freeform uh, is those surface is freeform lens already? Uh, we can see that if rotationally symmetric is not the case, so we can ask ourselves, so what is what is really a freeform lens? So I will come uh, in uh, in a, in the next uh, in a couple of uh, of slide about that. Um, we can also ask ourselves, the plastic injection work with freeform? So what is the challenge with that? It's very interesting to see how far the freeform uh, can be. A departure from a, st a standard lens to be able to be uh, plastic injection uh, to have a very good um, in plastic injection, no weld line and things like that. And uh, if using freeform mean asymmetric, um, so there is a question. So now you cannot rotate the barrel to make the focus. 
So you need to adjust the bias, the, the focus. So this is the kind of question we may ask. We will not answer all those questions in this presentation, but at least we will see uh, if really we have a freeform lens in optics in, in a cell phone and if we have any evidence that it's, uh, it's really there. So on the market, actually, we have a couple of uh, cell phones that claim to use, uh, um, to use this, um, this freeform optics. Uh, so uh, Huawei claim here that you have this ultra wide scenic camera lens with uh, 20 megapixel f 1.8, and uh, it's use uh, freeform optics to um, to correct somehow for the distortion. So let's keep this in mind. There is also another phone in the market which come from um, oh this is uh, again the Huawei one. Um, uh yeah so oh yeah that's that's the uh, oh my goodness i think that just make make an error here uh okay anyway that's 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 this 50 megapixel ultra wide camera that also used this freeform f2.2 and uh, here you have the oppo uh the oppo uh the oppo camera uh which is also a, f a 50 megapixel uh, that use potentially freeform with 110 degrees. So uh, all all those phone actually they, they they use freeform for what they call uh, ultra wide uh, at least wide angle lens and uh, up to uh, higher than 20 megapixel. And again, this is this is coming from the um, the um, the publicity from this Oppo uh, phone uh, when you have. Uh, you can see that uh, you have a perfect or some some correction, and you can. We don't know if this image is taken, and and do you have the fully advantage because you have freeform optics in there. Uh, it's difficult to know if you look to the publicity uh, spreadsheet of uh, of uh, this kind of company. So if we ask ourselves what is a really a freeform, uh, it's more or less uh, you can find the the answer in a quite recent paper published at the beginning of the year from Janik Roland Group, and uh, with people in uh, in Charlotte, and uh, and collaborator, uh, and uh, what what Janik claim here is uh, in the section two that uh, that a freeform system can be defined as uh, as a surface with no axis of rotation only invariant, so it means that. <laughs> Mostly, it's no, no more rotationally symmetric, and uh, and also that this type of surface requires at least three or more independent axes. So it means that from a diamond turning machine, it's it's what we call the C axis. So you cannot just rotate the piece and make it. You have to if you have to play in other direction, uh, then uh, it's probably a free form. Uh, in practical term, this is that it's more or less a coma shaped component. Uh, so in that case, it's not only asymmetric, like a, sphere, as like a, a cylindrical lens or a theoretical a theoretical lens, but it's more or less uh, a shape of a coma, uh, which is curved at certain both direction. And in that case, uh, is not anymore rotationally symmetric. You have a couple of examples here that. Uh, uh, that the a sphere or a symmetric gas sphere or uh, an off-axis conic and eventually a toroidal is, is no more uh, uh, what we call uh, a free form. Uh, sometimes you can say that uh, some of those components can be free form, but so it means that having a, a free form, um, a, a, a lens which is rotationally symmetric cannot be seen as a free form, even the shape of uh, of a cell phone. Those those very weird uh, wavy lens that I saw a few slides uh, cannot be seen as as a wavefront uh, as a free form. So let's go with uh, with some uh, some test here with uh, from the Huawei phone. Um, so uh, we mostly um, use the cell phone and take some images of this of uh, targets. And uh, we remove the camera lens uh, from the, the case, from the, the phone body. And we measure, uh, of course, the effective focal length, the back focal length, and also we test uh, the NTF, the auto color, the distortion. But what is really interesting to see if there is a, a free form lens there is really, can we find any asymmetry uh, in the field of view as the definition of a free form could be uh, that it's not any more uh, symmetric. 
So, uh, so these these tests had been done in in my lab in uh, at Laval University, who are equipped with all this optical bench. And, uh, and as I said, uh, we should be able to see the impact on the field of view and the distortion if there is any uh, freeform lens here. So let's, if we take a picture and we look to the image footprint, uh, this is what we will get. So we have this, uh, we have the field of view and the position, the nominal position on the sensor. So you have this dot line is what we have. Uh, so we have a departure from, from a perfect linear like uh, F uh, tangent theta lens, or F theta lens here. And so we have a certain departure here. Um, and uh, and uh, so uh, it looks like, okay, well, that this is in one direction from the field of view. And if we take this image and plus of minus 50 at various orientation in the diagonal and vertical and horizontal field of view, and we look to the derivative, so the slope of this, this is, this is what we get. So mainly you have in the vertical direction, you have the field of view, which is a little bit smaller because the sensor is smaller in their direction. On the horizontal field of view, you go from a, a, a field of view, which is higher, but yeah, as you can see, it seems to be a perfectly symmetric to the horizontal, to the vertical axis. And if you look to the diagonal, so the field of view is a little bit larger now, but again, it seems that it fits in the center. Up to up to the edge, so there is no evidence from this that there is a, that uh, that the lens is not uh, rotationally symmetric. So if we remove the lens from the body, we will be able to be a little bit larger here. So now the field of view will not be limited by the sensor. Uh, there is no uh, field stop, so we can will we be able in any direction to see the lens if there is any uh, uh, any difference in any direction. So here again, this is the derivative of, uh, of the uh, position uh, versus the field of view on the sensor. So at zero degrees at uh, in both vertical um, and different uh, positive and negative. And we have also at 45 degrees and at 90 degrees. So we just rotate the lens in and we, we just make a three cross section. And you can see that everything pretty much overlap. Uh, so there is no, again, no very huge evidence that there is, a, there is on the edge, for example, in one direction, uh, a slope which is different than, than the other. So I think that we, in the lab, what we conclude is mostly that it's, this lens is clearly uh, rotationally symmetric. And, uh, and this is uh, one of the conclusion we, uh, we have so far. So now if we look what we can do with, uh, with, with some asymmetry, and, uh, and this is a, a case that I want to show you here. And uh, in, in, uh, in the, there is a trend in cell phone that uh, if we want to, uh, to use, uh, uh, that maybe freeform optics can be used to provide an anamorphic cinematic lens. Uh, uh, like having uh, uh, a lens that can eventually stretch to have a, an image which is stretched to have more, more light in that direction. And then you can compress it to have this 16 to nine ratio, uh, like a cinematic lens. Uh, so this is, this is, this is mostly to, uh, to match the, uh, the 16, nine uh, widescreen uh, movie format. And uh, to do this, uh, you need an anamorphic correction. And if you admit that the freeform can be an anamorphic lens, uh, so now you can you can do this um, this um, this uh, this with uh, with freeform. So the design strategy here is to include in, into the the cell the the cell phone optics an anamorphic correction with uh, mostly uh, in the simplest way some uh, negative uh, uh, cylindrical a lens that will act as uh, an anamorphic uh, beam expander somehow, or uh, or gallium telescope that you will that you will lose to expand the field in one direction and to to have uh, to have no impact in the other direction. So here you you have in one direction no impact and the other direction you have a larger field of view so that will produce this anamorphic ratio. And of course, uh, actually it's it shows as a cylindrical. A component, but of course, uh, during the optimization process, it will come as uh, probably something very, 
much uh, stranger than that. <laughs> so uh, in paraxial approximation, we can have this anamorphic ratio defined here, and we can define it in terms of the expansion on the uh, object, uh, on the image height uh, relative to the tangent of the angle. And so we can have this, um, uh, this, this anamorphic ratio, which is mostly defined as the ratio of the focal length uh, in both direction for every single position in the, in the image. And we will see later that th th this anamorphic ratio can vary a lot. And this is why it's interesting to follow it at, uh, at uh, this mathematical way. So the process is, is to start with the cylindrical surface with this uh, 1.3 uh, anamorphic ratio, and then try to, uh, to improve the performance uh, by, uh, by using uh, various type of optics that are combination of, uh, of X and Y and not uh, rotationally symmetric anymore, uh, aspherical or uh, different type of surface. And if you do this, uh, what you what what will happen is then you can uh, you can analyze the performance, but you have to keep in mind that this design are are for cell phones, so there is very complex by injection molding, and so the shape of the lens become very weird, and it's very hard to follow how the lens would behave only in x and y, and then. You have to develop some some tools to look for the performance and uh, what we call the performance analysis here. So rather than using you know two uh, a, a single x and y uh, uh, wave front or OPD or ray fans, and now you have to use uh, a 2D map. And this is an example here how the anamorphic ratio uh, across the field lens across the field here. So it is a quarter of the field of view here. Um, and you have you have some symmetry on the other side here and here and here. Um, uh, you can see that the anamorphic ratio may varies a lot. And if you don't track this, you will not be able to to, to consider that in the corner here you have mostly a, a comp uh, an anamorphic ratio of two. And even if on on this side here up to this you are at the 1.3 level what as you wanted, and also in the vertical field of view. Uh, so consequently, uh, you cannot trust only the vertical and the horizontal uh, data to show if the if the the lens behave uh, correctly. Uh, again, this is this this is optimized as a kind of uh, very weird shape uh, freeform. We call freeform lens. This is an asymmetric uh, wavy lens that can be used uh, in 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 the cell phone design. So again, if you look to the MTF, you may have the same kind of uh, behavior that now you cannot trust only the tangential and the sagittal field uh, on, on the vertical and the horizontal field of view because this uh, non-rotationally symmetric lens, you, have, you may have some, some zone in the field of view that the MTF uh, may drop uh, suddenly or may have very weird shape. And this is, this is what we uh, what we have here. Uh, we can see that that twenty around 20, 21 degrees, you have this uh, this uh, this drop here in the MTF, and also some position here at the MTF drop. It, we expect some drop on the edge, so it's fine. But it's very it can be very weird. We have all this section that the MTF drop actually with this this section here. So if you didn't track it as a map, as a two D map, it's it's hard to believe that you you can. You can come at the end with a good design or maybe produce it and a very, very huge surprise at the end. And, uh, and here you have the tangential MTF and we have also the behavior, which is quite, that can be different in terms uh, for the sagittal field. So again, the, uh, the idea behind that is to be sure that you use a 2D map when you design with, um, with, uh, with the free form. And, uh, and again, uh, this is another example of uh, about the relative illumination. Uh, even if you have in X and Y some, some relative illumination that seems to be high or to a certain level, so you have 27% in the vertical, in the horizontal field of view and 44 in the vertical field of view. But if you look on the 2D map here, you, you, you can see that uh, in the corner here, you are mostly uh, at the 16%. So again, the mapping is important. 
So, um, so those mapping shows that um, that we were right when we studied the Huawei phone to look at the field of view and see if we can see any asymmetric because this very little study um, done by uh, by uh, by Immervision team shows that we can design an anamorphic uh, cinematic lens for a cell phone, but one of the main impact will be a very non-symmetric. Uh, field of view performance. So either in terms of MTF or uh, in terms of uh, uh, relative emission distortion and things like that. So uh, again, here you, you can see this, the, uh, the RMS spot size that in this map here that uh, quite has a, a non rotationally symmetric uh, profile in terms of, uh, of uh, full width F maximum. And also you can see that uh, lateral color is also something that behave uh, very strangely uh, according, even in a, in a cell phone industry, for those of, of you have designed a cell phone lens, the lateral color is, is always something that is, is tricky to, to play with uh, due to limited number of plastics, but also because it behaves sometimes very, very differently than a standard spherical lens. So, and even it's even more the case for uh, for uh, if you use a freeform uh, asymmetric uh, or asymmetric spherical lens uh, that we call that we can call freeform to do this kind of uh, 1.3 uh, anamorphic ratio. And uh, so far, this is what we got. And again, um, I didn't show the the uh, the, uh, the testing on the on the cell phone, uh, but uh, we can imagine. Uh, like the MTF and things like that, but I can I can show that we we didn't see anything or any evidence that it's a, is a asymmetric. So uh, to conclude the this talk, um, there is a, a few very a few product uh, in consumer, mostly for imaging, so camera phones that use or claims to use uh, freeform. Uh, for uh, and I put freeform. I, I don't know if it's a many freeform lens or a one freeform lens uh, for a wide angle uh, cell phone lens. Mostly, what we saw on the three phone that we 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 know, it's always a field of view higher than 100 degrees and uh, for uh, high resolution, 20 megapixel and more. And most of the time is for figure uh, 50 megapixel. Um, so. Tests have been done on one of them, uh, the Huawei. Uh, we, we saw the uh, image footprint uh, from, from the camera, uh, from the phone. So in the vertical, horizontal, and diagonal uh, for uh, the, the image taken to, from a target uh, with the phone. But, and then we remove the lens and we also look the lens in various direction. And uh, so our conclusion were that we can see any evidence of a non-symmetric field of view or distortion uh, with those um, uh, with those images on the Huawei. Uh, so it it's uh, it's not clear for us that uh, uh, if it's because the freeform surface is relatively symmetric or if the departure from the symmetry is so small that we cannot very notice it uh, on, the, um, on the image plane. So of course, uh, we, also, we can also conclude that the free form is, uh, is clearly outside the definition given by Roland in the optical paper recently this year, which, is, uh, which mostly prevent to, uh, to, um, to define a free form as any uh, uh, rotationally symmetric uh, uh, spherical, uh, aspheric or spherical component. And even if it's an asymmetric one, uh, as long as it's not a, a kind of coma shape, uh, it could be considered not as a free form. But we do agree that um, uh, at least from, from our side and probably on the market, on the consumer market that they, they will call free form any uh, asymmetric surface that they use. Um, and in the cell phone, they will not use cylindrical optics or toroidal lens. Uh, even if we try to use a toroidal or spherical, they will, the, the toroidal will be mostly uh, aspheric and with this wavy shape. So it will become much more complex than a single uh, toroidal lens or cylindrical optics. So in that case, we think that 
we can call it our this is our understanding of how the market called the uh, the freeform surfacing consumer but uh, what we realize also it's uh, under our analysis is if you want to design a freeform lens for the um, for for uh, any application uh, it's it's clear and it, all those things has been published before by uh, by people that are working in freeform that you cannot rely anymore just on uh, on X and Y or horizontal and vertical field of view. You really have to be care careful about the field mapping uh, in uh, in every uh, aspect of the design. In our case, we show that okay, well, it's going to be the anamorphic ratio, but also the MTF and also the uh, lateral color and uh, and all these uh, these things must be. Uh, in, uh, used to, um, to, to do the full analysis. I didn't talk about this, but uh, the testing of those surface is also very complex. So uh, in the cell phone industry, the, everything is molded. And, and so it's not the part that needs to be inspected, but uh, the negative of the part that was in the mold. And uh, so we really need a 2D profile of those small form mass production. And again, this is something that is not 100% clear on my side that it's, it's, uh, it's really available for mass production actually. So in other things that, uh, that push me to, uh, to, to, to have question about this free form in, in, in cell phone. Hope that the future will have to, uh, to understand a bit more about all, all those free form optics in cell phone. If it's really uh, free form and which definition is used uh, to, to claim that it's a free form. Uh, and uh, so I will be very happy to uh, take a question at this time. Uh, or you can uh, send me email uh, to, this, uh, to this address at Laval University, and I will be able, uh, very happy to, uh, to uh, answer it. Thank you very much.